All right, so we got uh, the COVID build inside the shop. We're getting ready to pull the rear axle out and swap out the front uh, drum brakes for V8 style drum brakes. Uh, remember, this is a budget build. Dad's got the 8 inch here that he just took all the covers off. We bought this uh, off of Facebook Marketplace. I think it was 150 bucks. Uh, came. He took care of it. Yep, took care of it. Nice and clean. Yep. It's 8 inch housing. Brand new bearings Painted. pressed on the axle. Yep, faces mm -hmm. are all painted. And the center section's right there. Uh, so Dad's just taking this all up. Or putting it together, I guess, but taking the covers off and everything. The mouse trap. And what year do we got? <laughs> <laughs> what do we got? What do we got? Oh, it looks like an old auto. Yeah. Old cars, old marketplace. Cars. March 3rd, 94. 1994 Sam's paper. Birthday. There we go. So, yeah, we're just uh, putting that back together and then uh, gonna pull out the little six cylinder diff. And up front, like I said, we got uh, V8 five lug drum brakes. So, we're gonna have to change the spindle out and take everything off. Uh, the brakes are from my blue car, which is right here, which now has a disc brake swap on it. And the rears are from my buddy, uh, Shelby. So there's the rears, all taken apart. Put that all together, put it in, be done. Back in our day, we used to use air tools. <laughs> but my son has sold me on the DeWalt. No more air tools. We're not needed. Yeah. Good job, DeWalt. Super strong. <laughs> We're going on tour next year. So maybe you can back us up. Ninety-nine, one hundred. <laughs> oh, I used to be able to do this all day long. <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. So I got the V8 spindles here that we've uh, accumulated from other cars. As you can see, I've already kind of cleaned this one up. This one's all greasy still, so I'm going to clean that up quickly. Um, upper and lower ball joints are the same, and so are the tie rods. This uh, yoke is different, uh, so there are V8 bearings with the drum brakes that I took off of my car, off of the blue car. Uh, so this will go on, the four lug suspension will come off. Uh, with the brakes, and uh, we should be good to go. Alright, so Dad's been on a mission uh, when I was at work yesterday. I painted up these uh, spindles, so they're all looking nice, nice. He got the upper uh, ball joint out. Turns out it's bad, as well as the other side, so we got those on order. Um, on the rear... Get all the brakes together. Just gotta set this all up true. Got the emergency brake hooked up. He's got the lowering blocks installed. This is off the original six cylinder diff, so we have to bend it just a little bit because these, uh, let's see here if you can see it. These wheel cylinders, the a uh, line comes in and at, at an angle, whereas the six cylinder one went straight in. So you gotta tweak the line just a little bit. Um, shocks are all hooked up. Uh, I noticed yesterday that there was this fluid on the ground. I thought it was brake fluid. But then I really started looking at it and I smelt it. Unfortunately, that's not brake fluid. That is the 
heater core and the fluid dripped down and seeped all the way to the back and it's coming out of the drain hole so you can see there's a drip of antifreeze right there so that's my mission today take the heater box out and get that uh, heater core all changed out so no more leaks All right, so got the heater box all put back together. These are the clips. I don't know how many there are, but uh, some of the um, parts that it clips onto, they tend to break over time, as you can see. One, two. So wherever the clips can go, I put them on. Uh, the new heater core is in. These Spectra units always need a little, a little trimming down below. As you can see, the original hole was right here. Um, the offset is a little different, so it's a little taller here than the factory unit. It's a little trimming with the deburr, deburr um, and that's a quick work. I cleaned it all, sprayed it with spray nine, got all the, the junk out of there, put this new housing, or put this old housing back on. I sprayed some, um, what's it called, rush check up in the cowl just to kind of prevent it from getting any worse. It's not bad actually right now. Um, and yeah, that's all put back together. Motor spins nice and freely. So we're gonna put that back in. All right, so the heater box is all back in place. You might have saw I took the passenger side seat out right there. I'm actually gonna go ahead and take the driver's side and the back seat out along with the console and the door sills. I'll take the carpet out, give it a good pressure wash because all the um, coolant has been saturated in there. Probably take the, the underlay mat out as well and uh, pressure wash that, let it dry out in the sun, reinstall it, and uh, we should be good to go, no more leaks. Yeah, I'll take that for original floors. Honestly, I can't believe how solid it is. Factory seam sealer. Nice. Dad just got back with the new ball joints. He also bought a few other things. Uh, we're gonna get these installed. It's the four bolt system. Some are three, but we're gonna get that installed. Do the other side, put everything back together and be done with this. All right, so before any of you ask, yes, I am going with 
drum brakes on the front. The reason being is this is a budget build. This is considered what we, what me and dad considered the COVID build. Basically, whatever we had laying around the shop, um, obviously minus fluids and stuff like that. But these brakes are from my blue car before I did a disc brake swap. Worked perfectly, brand new wheel cylinders, brand new shoes. So I know it works. Uh, it'll be much better than the four lugs. I think there's more surface, uh, and you obviously get a five lug uh, wheel pattern. So we're going to go with some styled steel wheels that we have also laying around the shop, and we're going to put them on and should make the appearance much nicer. And that is why you always take the master cylinder off. <laughs> Not sure if you can see that, but that's all junk. Let's see if I can dig it out. Oh yeah, she's slimy. Little sludgy. Oh my god, look at the look at the, look at the stuff floating in there. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. We'll edit that, sorry. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank God you just <laughs> no, come on. We would have we would that would that would end up in your all your hard work. Oh my god. So you know, keep that as a reminder. I'll always take it out. Always take it out. It's fifteen years old, Mike. Alright, got the master cylinder all cleaned up. Before, after. Before, after. Time to get it installed and uh, bleed the brakes. Alright, so I pulled these wheels down from uh, the storage. Uh, we bought them with the 65 Texas car. And they basically match the same ones that are on my blue car. So I threw them on the convertible. My god. Instant 10 points. <laughs> and you know what? Check out the match of the white wall. <laughs> to the tan top. Takes a long time for that white wall to get like that. I don't even know if I'm gonna wash it to be honest. <laughs> I think it looks sexy. But right now, I'll pull those off. I'm uh, finally adjusting the brakes. Doing the final adjustment, making sure there's uh, good contact. Slightly dragging, might do a little more. And I know this side, I don't even think this side's dragging at all. Very little. So we're gonna adjust that one as well. Um, the backs are all adjusted, the brakes are all bled. Front end is all together, I gotta take the wood out there. 
We should be motoring here. A few little odds and ends under there. But it's coming along. Coming along. Alright, so those of you that are unfamiliar with Fords or drum brakes in general, see this little slot right here? Right there. Basically what there is, is there's an adjuster inside the, the drum housing that um, as you turn, it expands the shoes closer to the drum itself. So as you can see right now, there's no sound of any shoes uh, touching the drum. So we're gonna adjust this. Still nothing. A little more there. Yeah, just adjusting the brakes. I'm gonna back it off a tooth. I think yet? that's good. All right, so we're finalizing a few things underneath the car before we lower it uh, down onto its wheels. Right now, I'm adjusting the emergency brake cable, as you can see here. So you got quite a bit of adjustment. This is your cable going all the way to the back wheels. And uh, basically all you're doing is taking up the slack. It's always great to have two people, so one's under the car and the other one's inside the car. Dad, you wanna pull that emergency brake cable? Let's see if it locks. Still yeah. Turner? Maybe more. Okay. So just slight increments and we'll get her done. Alright folks, there she is, all on the fresh wheels, on all fours. Oh my god, what a, what a nice little transformation. Honestly, I, I don't even think I'm going to clean the white walls. And I'm being honest, it, like, it matches so perfectly. The car is freaking sweet. Two inch lowering blocks in the rear. Six cylinder springs in the front with the V8. Uh, eight inch rear end. I think it's a two, 280 gear or 275. This now has five lug wheels. So now we have a coupe, a fastback, and a convertible. All of 65, 66 era what do you guys think should we put the old uh, four lug wheels back on with hubcaps no definitely not so making pretty good progress here on the 66 convertible i've got all the wires located where i want them everything's hooked up minus that one right there which is your temp sensor switch um all the wiring i loomed in with the classic braid stuff that I got from Painless and uh, I think it looks pretty good compared to what it the mess of wiring that it had before and uh, we got rid of all this garbage <laughs> but we're making pretty good progress I'm about to put the carpet in because it's all dry now from getting pressure washed we cleaned it with laundry detergent and uh, it smells pretty good
All right, so just about ready to go for a drive. Got the interior all put back together. Seats are all in, carpet's in, cons console's in. Got a different air cleaner on it now. But we're looking pretty good. About to take it for a drive. Sidewall one to peel off the rim <laughs> at any feel of a, of a, a turn. Of a turn. <laughs> oh, there's my center cap! Oh, oh no! Oh no! Oh, no. I, caught it. I caught it where? I caught it where? It's a high bush. Oh, you can God. turn around. I'll turn around. Yeah, don't turn here. No! <laughs> Like, what's that? Is that the one? Ding, 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 the one ding, ding, that ding. you tighten the seats? Yeah. I still gotta fix that exhaust leak. Jesus Christ, I don't think I can know where it is now. What do you need to turn? I'm doing that. of a Lincoln for some reason. Yeah. I feel like we did this in a Lincoln. Hey? Eh? It's got the heartbeat of a Lincoln. <laughs> Found it. <laughs> Let's go. <sighs> All right, so what do you think? <laughs> all all pretty good, pretty good. Another notch in the belt. Yeah, brakes work. Diff is not howling at all, which is really nice. Yeah. And uh, I still think it's a Bosi. Yeah. It's a cheapy, but it's a Bosi. Yeah. Traction lock, whatever. We'll do another hit here. I think you're just you're just too hard in it. Just too hard in it. Yeah. So be a little more gentle. Posse. That's right? a posse, yeah. 100%. You're stopping it. I'm stopping it. All right, fair enough. She's been sitting for a while. Yeah, once I felt her side saddle there a little. Yeah, that's a, that's a telltale sign. All right, so we're headed home now after a decent little cruise. And uh, we're going to try something we haven't tried yet. And that's the convertible top. We didn't want to try it before the test drive, just in case it didn't go back down. Here, here's this, look, here's the turkey again. Here's that turkey again. Uh, oh, oh my, my, and the oh, babies. And babies. Oh, come on. Get over. 
We have to stop for the little ones. Anyways, we're gonna test it at home just in case it doesn't want to go back down or go back up. up. Yeah. One side up, one side so, down. So uh, we'll park it for the night, test out the roof, and I think this we can call a win. Call this one a win. Definitely needs an alignment. <laughs> Just out. Uh, of course, he's upside down. Yeah, just a little drunk. All right, so we're back home now. I've unlatched the roof. Let's see if this power top works. Oh man! Oh baby! Oh, that's oh, nice. Yeah, you know what they say? Top. When the top goes down, oh, the price goes up. We're definitely going for a drive now. Get back in the car. <laughs> oh, that's a sexy hey, nice. I sure could get used to this. <laughs> you Californians have it, have it made. Oh my God. Everything's good. Oil pressure is not uh, non-existent right now, just because the uh, sensor is for a light switch rather than uh, a gauge. Listen to those bias plies ch chirping. Gotta fix that exhaust leak. But all in all, what a cruiser. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for this episode of Classic Mustangs 429. If you like what you saw, please hit the like and subscribe button below. I just want to say thank you to all of you for getting the channel up to 60,000 subscribers. Let's see if we can hit that 100,000 subscriber mark before the end of the year. That would be a huge accomplishment for myself and for the channel. Uh, videos will be coming out more frequently now, now that it is coming up to winter time. There will be less enjoyable time enjoying the cars and more time working on them and more time for editing. So thank you again for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button below. Until next time, Mike from Classic Mustangs 429 signing out.